Hi guys, uh, it's Andreas on the Mainliner with another Violent Finds update. Um, <clears throat> it's one that's been in the making for a long, long time. Uh, yeah, I didn't have time to actually do it before, uh, you know, now. Uh, I was on holiday as well, so, you know, things didn't work out. But I'm doing it now because... A, I wanted to do it anyway, and B, because, you know, we have some uh, very notable uh, people from the vinyl community, at least, you know, the vinyl community that I know, uh, <clears throat> come in and, you know, make a video out of the blue. So we had uh, John Coltrane uh, 68 make a video, which is amazing. We had double o, uh, Glowing Double O Cabbage, Jeff, make a video. <clears throat> and uh, Fred, Pixar 1000, make a two videos in the last couple of weeks so that's amazing so and here am I I mean you know not as important but you know I'm making a video as well <laughs> so anyway doesn't matter um, yeah well I don't want to ramble on I mean it's great that they're back and I hope that they keep on making videos because you know it's uh, it's not the same I mean you know it's not fun not having the VC, you know, it's, it's not fun. Anyway, what's playing in the background? Uh, this is uh, a recent release, I've shown this um, previous video, it's a, it's a band called Oreo or Ryo or, or however you want to call it. Uh, this compilation is called Strange uh, Beauty, came out on Black ever. Black I want to say? Uh, I don't remember what uh, the label. The name of the label is, uh, but yeah, came out like in May or something like that, and it's uh, it's one man band that made like a single back in 1979, 1980 or something like that, and uh, they've released some additional uh, material on this album. Um, it's very Heldon esque, uh, as you can probably hear in the background. It's a really good good comp um, yeah very obscure very interesting so yeah that's what will be playing in the background now uh, stuff that I haven't shown and probably will have now when I was uh, I was thinking about you know making a video I was like you know maybe I should start doing this and you know if I could get it to be on a thumbnail that would be really really good um, this is this is obviously a CDR of uh, Radiohead's uh, pool and uh, I would put something like you know I was thinking that that would be really fun to say that this channel has you know this how low has this channel uh, stooped to you know so showing CDRs obviously I have a CDR because uh, I've uh, ordered the special edition of uh, the moonshade pool after a lot of deliberation and thinking about it and not being entirely sold on the first two songs that were released on initially uh, before you could actually order the, the thing and I was like oh, Radiohead are, is this kind of band that can massively disappoint you so the previous album uh, I have it here I mean you know it's 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 so bad it's it's not bad bad it's not that good. After In Rainbows, they, they released the... Uh, oh, what's the name of the album? Oh, yeah. King of Limbs. Yeah, I remember it now. So, King of Limbs. So, I was really excited about it. I ordered the special edition, which is in the bag, and it has a newspaper and blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. And I ordered it, and then, you know, I could get the download, and I got the download, and I played it, and it was like... What? <laughs> I didn't like it. It was terrible. So after a lot of deliberation, I was thinking, maybe should I buy it, should I not buy it? I wasn't entirely sold on it, and um, but I did order it, and the special edition will be coming in September. So I had to work with uh, this for uh, a while. Now, uh, in the meantime, I also went to Rough Trade and I got me uh, a copy. Uh, a white vinyl copy. I know that um, uh, Fred was saying that oh, the white, white vinyl is terrible, it's the worst vinyl ever, and da da da, da all that kind of stuff. Uh, I've played it, and I have to say that it sounds alright. 
Uh, the other reason why I got the white vinyl is that the special edition is black vinyl, so you know, I can have this. And the third reason is that if for whatever reason I want to sell this, people like colored vinyl for whatever reason. I mean, you know, I personally I'm not very interested. Uh, but, so yeah, it might fetch a little bit more if I need to sell it. On to the music. Yes, so as I've, uh, as you probably know, I, I am a bit of a Radiohead fanboy. Um, I, one of the top albums, I think the top album ever, and I've said it quite a few times, in my opinion is In Rainbows and from Radiohead, but I think this one tops it. And um, I think that Radiohead have made another record that sort of shows a way forward uh, for music, independent rock music, whatever, of the 21st century. <laughs> it's super modern, it's, it has influences from a lot of areas, electronic music, rock music, everything is just blended into one in a very tasteful kind of way without anything sort of, you know, overwhelming anything. The production is amazing. The songs have this kind of uh, depth if you like and they are a bit of a blank canvas they don't say something specific and this is a better way for you to project your own sort of inner thoughts and emotions and things that you want to see in this and it is, it is like a pool in that sense is that you are reflected in it uh, but the music is amazing and you know it just builds up and you know my, my favorite song I'm saying favorite song here because Although, I have to admit that this is not the kind of album that you can listen to a song. So, you know, it just builds up to Identikit and then, you know, you can just... <laughs> it's mind-blown, mind-blown. I mean, Identikit is... Uh, you know, it just represent this, represents this album perfectly. It has these crowd influences, then it sort of drifts off to a... Uh, progressive sort of chorusy thing and then goes back into a more rock kind of uh, thing it's, it's just amazing mind blown mind blown seriously one of the best records of the year uh, I mean you know if if I had to buy just one album this year it would be this and I would be perfectly satisfied and yeah no need for anything else in my opinion uh, bloody amazing uh, and also it's the kind of album that there are albums that I can just play one side or you know play a song from it if I start playing this it goes start to finish and that's it you know there's nothing else uninterrupted you have to just listen to the whole thing the other thing is the production is amazing uh, there's like you know uh, Johnny Greenwood has uh, involved uh, the philharmonic or whatever there's like actual orchestra in there whoops side one finished so uh, sorry uh, yeah uh, the philharmonic and whatnot and don't listen to this album just you know snippets of it that's one thing second thing second thing is don't listen to it from your laptop or you know just it will not bring out the value go to a friend that has a good system and listen to it and do a session and just say you know what now we're listening to this album start to finish and that's it otherwise you're missing out trust me best album of the year radiohead number one band ever that's it <laughs> uh, yeah personally I am blown away and this is an amazing album and I will not say anything more about this and just go out listen to it and yeah believe the hype it is really really good now records other records uh, records other than Radiohead there is life after Radiohead and uh, I have some records here to show so I got this, uh, it's been on a want list, I was in an order that uh, never came through like many years ago and never since it's been like, you know, lingering in, you know, 
uh, a want list uh, on Amazon. And I saw this, this is a Mr. Bongo issue of Flavola, Flaviola, uh, El Bando do Sol, 1976, Brazil, psychedelic uh, Brazilian music, uh, absolute classic. And, you know, uh, it was in, I was like, yeah, I want to buy it, I want to get it. And the price was going up and it was going down and it was like, when I ordered it, it was like 12 pounds and then at some point it was 23 pounds and then 16 pounds and I found it for seven. So I was like, yeah, now I'm getting it. I have to. It's like, it will never get any cheaper. So yeah, uh, absolute classic. You should get it. And also, if uh, while you're at it, check these out from Mr. Bongo and uh, get these as well because yeah, you have to. Uh, a short uh, time ago, I was uh, showing uh, Terry Brooks and The Strange and I was showing the second album uh, and uh, it was time I got uh, Raw Power which is another classic sort of uh, private, I think it was private uh, originally, private press sort of uh, psychedelic uh, space rock kind of uh, affair and uh, yeah this is a, an Akarma reissue and I got it for a very fair price and it was really good condition and you know it's an absolute classic so yeah I got that. I uh, went to a record fair um, recently, um, which was not that good. I, I found some things, but you know, I was like, man, I don't, I don't want to, you know, get it. Um, and um, they had uh, there was a store that had like new uh, releases, and this is one of the releases I wanted to get for a while. Uh, Viet Cong, uh, Canadian band, um, indie sort of post-punky sort of affair uh, and um, this came out in 2015 I want to say yeah it did come out in 2015 now this album I am not entirely sold on but if you listen to Continental Drift sort of starts making sense check this out it's quite good I mean People have been hyping it and they've been saying, oh yeah, one of the best albums of 2015. Duh. Yeah, it has some really good moments. Those moments are just amazing, I think, in my opinion. And, you know, it was worth getting for that reason. Um, uh, a reissue uh, that I'm very happy to have, although I think that we could uh, do with another one from this guy. So, uh, <laughs> this is jazz. <laughs> so, so yeah, I'm uh, <laughs> um, yeah showing my very intellectual sort of uh, side of things before I delve into metal. <laughs> so, <laughs> expansion by Listen Johnny <coughs> uh, Listen Smith uh, Lonnie Listen Smith. Sorry, yeah. Expansions. This is 1975, and uh, this is a sort of. Um, it's a good album. Uh, I won't say it's amazing and oh, you know, mind blown and whatnot. He's done better ones. I think that uh, the one that um, Cosmic, uh, what was it? Um, expan no, yeah, this is Expansions, and the other one is um, Astral Traveling, uh, which is that is really good and I really wish that uh, you know they reissued that one because I cannot find originals that's the thing if I could find an original I would pay for it but I haven't seen one uh, in a while and I have been looking and yeah no, no. in the US it's fairly easy to find this is a good album uh, don't don't get me wrong but I think that it's a little bit uneven and it's not like his best so yeah there you go uh, da -da 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 -da. Another recent uh, release, uh, this is Kikagaku Moyo, a Japanese band, uh, the third album, uh, and uh, they're sort of like, it's going sort of psychedelic, um, cinematic, sort of um, easy listening uh, psychedelic music in my opinion. This is a good album, it's not... I'm not a huge fan. I've seen them twice live and I have all their albums. I think that they're better experienced live, especially when they have the sitar player with them. 
because I've seen them with the sitar player twice. They're really good, and I've seen actually no three times I've seen them. Yes, twice with the sitar player, which is amazing, and once when they didn't have him with them, and they were playing more like stoner sort of. They sounded like a stoner band, and it wasn't that that good. But yeah, it, it it's all right. It, it's it's a good album, you know, uh, for what it is. It's not. Some people will think that it's, you know, bees knees. I think it's good. There you go. And I bought it. It means that, you know, it's, I think that it's alright. Uh, Australian bands. I don't know how to pronounce this. Diat, diat, di, diat. <laughs> yeah, um, this is an Australian band. This came out in 2015, I think, or it's a little bit more recent. It looks like a hardcore band but uh, it's like more, more post-punky and uh, it's quite good. Do check these guys out. And uh, talking about post-punk, uh, absolutely essential sort of a release for Gazi, Repeater and yeah it's just bloody amazing album. Have to get it. I need to find Mission of Burma now versus yeah, absolutely essential. Do check it out. Uh, yeah, I will not say anymore. Now, <clears throat> no, side B hasn't finished yet. Good. 16 minutes. Making good time. I don't know if I will split this video into two sections, like, you know, one regular music and one metal music only. Uh, we'll see. Uh, yes, uh, I was uh, back home. Uh, in Greece and um, on holiday and on the last day I decided uh, to go to some record shops I know there and I will rant now because I went to those record shops and uh, I got reminded how much better used the new record shops in Greece are than here in the UK and I've been I've been around and um, everywhere I visit I always go to record shops and uh, the UK record shops at least the ones in London they're just a huge huge disappointment uh, you know they're bigger yeah I give them that um, they're bigger than you know the uh, UK the, the Greek equivalent but the stuff they have, the way that they present them, and everything else is just shit. First of all, UK record shops don't specialize. You have, I mean, you will not find a specialist shop. I went to this place and they had like, you know, a section that had like psychedelia, uh, German, Italian, US, and then they had like, you know, uh, modern releases like sort of stoner releases which is just a huge chunk of it anyway and the thing is that they specialized they had like you know we have a section and this is what we this is the audience that we pander to and this is we are really good at doing that went to another one that had like anyway I'll, I'll get to it so from the one that I, I mentioned that had like you know the different sections and the stoner and whatnot I picked up the following things I got most of my most of the things that I got from Greece are from that shop and, you know I've spent a bit of money there so I didn't have that much to spend on ever and anything else so start off with uh, two new releases uh, this is uh, from uh, Daggard uh, Daggard is um, a label, if you're aware of, from Italy that has been making um, reissues of Italian uh, soundtracks. And um, these two albums are from uh, an artist called uh, Daniela Casa. This is Societa Malata, and this is uh, called uh, Ricordi di Infinanzia. Infinanzia. This is a new one, I haven't seen this one. I am aware of this one, this has been released uh, before uh, from another label uh, fairly recently but with a different different cover and all that but you know this is like you know, on Daggard and it's like a nice translucent 
vinyl, which I like translucent vinyl. I don't like colored vinyl, I like translucent ones. And uh, yeah, and uh, this, is, this is like classic sort of uh, library music. Highly, highly recommended. Uh, this one I haven't had time to listen to, but I am very well, you know, I, I've listened to this one and I know that it's really good and it comes highly recommended. So do check it out. This is an album that you can find fairly easily. Uh, so yeah, you can, you can get that. I don't know why I bought these. Uh, I think that I bought them because they were daggered. I know that you know they won't be around for long. I think I could have got other things as well. Yeah. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> on the section that they have with Scandinavian music, uh, they had a lot of releases, reissues from Spart Records, and this is one of them. Tasavalan uh, Presidente, Milky Way Moses, and I was reading this uh, and was saying that, you know, oh, this is like a piece of Finnish rock history, and um, I had a conversation with a guy and I was like, you know what, because I had some, I pulled out some other records as well and I had, had to listen to them before I got them. And uh, <clears throat> when it came to this, I was like, you know, what, what kind of music is this? I, I'm not aware of it. It looks, looks very interesting. <clears throat> and he said, well, it's progressive. And, uh, well, he recommended it. I didn't listen to it, and I just got it. And, um, you know, that is something that can go wrong. Uh, oh, you know, just got it uh, without listening to it. But, um, yeah, it's... It is progressive, it's not like super progressive, like magma or something like that, but it is, and, and I got a few progressive records as well, it's like, it's quite, <laughs> quite interesting, but yeah, I haven't listened to it enough to say, you know, to give an opinion, so I will just show it for now. Um, another progressive album that I got uh, is this one. Univeria Zect, uh, and this is uh, what is this? The Unnameables. This is a reissue on the Golden Pavilion. Uh, Univeria Zect is uh, an offshoot from the drummer of Magma, if I remember correctly. This is progressive again, uh, but it's not Magma ish progressive, I think. It's a little bit more toned down, and uh, it's, it's sort of the. I've, I've checked it out before in, uh, on Spotify and I, I found it really good and uh, yeah, it was, um, I saw it there and I was like, yeah, screw it, I'm getting it. Uh, here is uh, a reissue uh, of um, a private press uh, psychedelic folk album from 70 something. Yeah, very expensive, uh, originals go for crazy money, and this is a time lag reissue. Uh, this came out in 2000, anywhere between 2005 or 2010 or something, in between there. And this is Celebration and uh, Old Green Village, 350 copies, and you can check it out on, you know, YouTube and whatnot. This is like, you know, a very classic sort of album from, uh, from that era. Um, and then uh, a new reissue, Hassan's Walk from uh, Dadasi, uh, Como Lafe. I think that um, I've, I've been listening to this on Spotify and uh, it was um, under Horace Tapscott or something like that. Don't know. I, I don't have the... I don't have I don't have the background on this one, but I know that it's a cool cool album. It came out in 1982, 83, 83. It doesn't sound 80, 80s though. It is is really nice spiritual sort of uh, jazzy album, so really good. Uh, it is out there, so you can check it out. And 24 minutes, fucking hell, it will never upload. <laughs> That's the thing. So <laughs> yeah, I have. Um, my, my internet connection just uh, is way slow to upload. It's painful. It's really painful. It can take a day. So, you know, that's uh, another reason why I'm not uh, doing videos these days because um, I've lost the ability to upload quickly. Anyway, and yeah. 
and from that place uh, the last one I got is this one now I saw this and it's like you know what I need to check this out uh, now this is uh, it looks Japanese the guys that are playing behind are not Japanese they're South African and uh, the name of the band is uh, Snake Snake Shed, and uh, the guy is like uh, the, the leader is Steve uh, Linegans, and the album is called uh, Classic Epics. Apparently, it has something to do with samurais and whatnot because they're dressed like samurais and they have all these Japanese looking guys serving them. I don't know eggs. <laughs> I have no idea what, what's going on. So anyway, I saw this. And that's the the album that sort of sparked the conversation. It's like you know what what the hell you know what is this you know blah blah blah. Can't check it out and whatnot. And um, yeah, and we played the, an a, a track that we found on YouTube, which is Desert. And uh, this is a issue from 1990 or something like that. It was sealed. Uh, this is limited, and is. It's really good. I think that is one of the best ones I got from this bunch that I've shown. And uh, yeah, yeah, check this this guy out. Yeah, so it was like, ooh, this is interesting. I need to get that. So yeah, <clears throat> so that's what I got in one place. Then I got to a place that have uh, has like it's specializing on hardcore and punk and and sort of heavy sounding stuff and I found uh, this this is a um, Canadian uh, issue or something like that it, it looks legit it doesn't look like uh, you know a dodgy because it has a dinner first of all and uh, it was fairly cheap so Melvin's Osma and it is colored so it doesn't doesn't look to me as um, a boost it looks like a, a good one so Melvin's, Melvin's um, discography has been reissued, uh, but I found this pretty cheap, it was like 15 euros or something like that, and it was really good condition, so I have no Melvin's for whatever reason in my collection, so I had to get it. And then I got to the used, which is like just used albums uh, shop, which is uh, one that I've been visiting for many, many, many years, and yeah it's, that's where it's, it's like oh, fuck man you know this is a record shop now that guy his name is alex and it's, uh, the, the record shop is called art art Rat, and he specializes in two things 80s post anything after 1977 between 1977 and 1989 so punk post-punk uh, you know paisley underground that kind of stuff. He has some newer stuff as well, but that's one chunk. So if you go into the shop, it's really small. Right hand side, 1977 to 1989. Left hand side, 60 Psychedelia. And 60 Psychedelia, Kraut Rock, whatnot. And I'm talking about good fucking records. In good condition. They are expensive but these records are expensive and it's stuff that you flick through and you're like, you know what, I know two out of 10, the two out of 10 I know are really cool. So I assume that the rest of it is really good. Here you go in the record shop and it's like used and it's like shit, 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 musically, condition wise, everything is like crap. And like you know, one good thing, uh, you know, is you have to actually dig. There, you're like, I don't have enough money. <laughs> I need to get a mortgage. What the hell is going on? Anyway, there, um, he, he just has amazing stuff. Anyway, uh, I found this album. So this album is called Camberwell Now. And funny way that I discovered this album. This is a side project from one of the uh, people from This Heat. Uh, the person that I'm talking about is uh, Charles Hayward, uh, the drummer, drummer I think from This Heat. And this came out in 1986. 
and this is very uh, it does sound like a more accessible and more bass heavy sort of more ba not bass heavy uh, there's a lot more things happening with the bass basically that's why I'm uh, mentioning that with a lot more electronics uh, DC basically and um, yeah I found out from this uh, this album because uh, it just so happened that uh, you know I moved like a couple of times last year and now I have settled in Camberwell and uh, I was talking to a friend of mine and uh, she was saying now uh, it's like oh yeah I'm moving again oh bloody hell where are you going I'm going to Camberwell oh Camberwell Camberwell now it's like Camberwell now well, what do you mean uh, yeah, yeah don't you know them it's like you know side project from this seat is like you know you need to check them out it's like I did check them out I did like them and I got them so Camberwell now from Andreas in Camberwell and Camberwell. Check it out, really, really good. Now, it's been 30 minutes, no time to do the metal stuff, so we'll do a separate video. And uh, yeah, um, thanks for hanging out, uh, if you hang, hang, hanged out for this long uh, and you totally rated me. So this is the end of the video, you know. You know what you can do, uh, you have, you had, you could do it all along. You could like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it. Leave a comment if you want to leave a comment on anything. You know, it can be, you know, uh, whatever you want it to be. Uh, slant, you know, you can just use bad language, do anything you want. Uh, and, you know, if you like this sort of thing, you can subscribe. Or if you think it's other, other rubbish, you can unsubscribe. And, um, you know, uh, that's it. I will see you around for another video with the metal releases.